The purpose of this slide is this AI always helps even the current things we've known and love, right? RRM has been around for, what, 15, 20 years since airspace. I would say the interesting thing for me is when I did RRM at airspace uh, is this reward action, right? We all know that RRM basically just channel power bandwidth stuff. Uh, so that's the actions we take. The state, you know, this is all the utilization we've always used. The big difference now with these, what we call reinforcement learning algorithms, is we have the concept of some reward, right? And this reward right now is really around user experience. So when back in airspace when I was doing this, it was really around trying to minimize the, how AP saw each other, right? Trying to minimize how much noise we heard and everything. Uh, so the big change here is the reward system is different. The other big change is reinforcements, these AI algorithms, they look over broader times, right? In the past, we were looking on trying to make a decision, trying to optimize noise over some small period of time. Here we're looking at data from week, month ago. So this lets you start to get much more intelligent decisions, long-term reward decisions. So like, hey, I know the microwave oven's on Monday through Friday, but not on Saturday and Sunday. So the decision I make on Saturday and Sunday is slightly different than the decision I make on, those, on the, uh, the weekdays. Um, the other big thing is really around global and local. In the past, we were probably changing sites, you know, either on a set of APs or a site. We were changing all of them, usually at the evening time, right? You could set it for every hour, but most people said, like, let's just touch this every, every morning, early, every morning. Uh, with these new reinforcement learning algorithms, we're getting much more local on your personal experience. So if there's an immediate problem in this area, right, if something happens locally here, these algorithms can start making adjustments locally around this area if I start to sense that you know, the user experience in this room is starting to go down. How do you keep it, though, from being too active, like changing things too quickly in those scenarios? But yeah, so, I mean, so there is time knobs on it, especially around local. So, I mean, so the global knob is usually people adjust this every night, right? They go through and they try to make some adjustment every night when the network's down. The local knob is very tightly controlled. There is a very threshold on it has to be a serious problem for you to make an adjustment. Right. Right. So that's kind of the time. There's not, it's an, an asynchronous event thing. It's like a threshold thing. It's not is like there something that keeps it from constantly shifting, though, as it's yes. making those. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, Absolutely. And that, a lot of dampening. Right. And that is the thing, you know, when you actually start to look at what's happening in all these algorithms, you know, that's why I'm saying eventually everyone in this room needs to kind of move from being a skeptic to being informed about which, you know, this AI stuff is real, right? I mean, we're not the only guys out here talking about AI. It's, it's, it's already impacting you in yourself, in your cars, in your healthcare. It's going to impact networking also. And so this is, you know, reinforcement learning algorithms. These are algorithms we couldn't use five years ago because we didn't have the process, you know, this, we, you couldn't run it on a, a Linux box, right? I couldn't run this on a controller per se. You know, same thing with the neural network stuff. The neural networks, to make those neural networks interesting, you've got to get a relatively big neural network to do something interesting. So the problem with making, you know, a change, uh, an RRM change, you know, say once once a day in the evening, is you're, you're making that change when all of your walking attenuators have gone home, right? right. Correct. And, and that obviously that 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 creates an impact. So are you using? I, I'm assuming now when you guys are doing this, that you're using this more based on all of that data that you yes. got had throughout the day. Twenty-four hours worth of data. Yes. If the Twenty-four hours worth of data. That is every minute, every client average RSS. Right. Site. This is the piece that never existed in RRM uh, in the industry before uh, today, right? Is 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 basically how are my how is my average user RSSI? Did my change positively impact it or negatively impact? Yeah, I, it? Not how the APs can hear each other. And Sudhir will give you a demo, but I would say we've had some you know we've had some very skeptical RRM guys, and now they're believers. And so we've converted some very skeptical guys about whether or not this stuff is going to work. And the demo here will basically, I would say, yeah. Sudhir, that we've actually, you know, to your point, we've had some very skeptics who's actually now looked at it and said, this is amazing. I'm kind, of question, I'm kind of curious about just if you guys have got any analytics on the fact that if you're basing more on user experience yeah. and less on just the right. RF, right. how many times have you seen that optimization of RRM do something that technically we in this room would probably say wasn't a good idea, but it was good for the user. Yeah, yeah so, so uh, actually more times than you think, here's why. Because how are we going to make a decision on what is good, right? You're going to do a site survey. Site survey is very, very, very real for the moment you did it, right? 
but it is transient, right? And so we can do a site survey right now and say, you know what, this is what we should do. But the system is actually layering every minute data for 24 hours, and it's actually saying, how can I optimize capacity across the entire site, across 24 hours, when users exist? Right? So let me actually show you a quick glimpse of sort of where this is headed, right? So, um, so for RRM, again, this is something that's, uh, that's going to be there for our, all, all of our customers in the next uh, uh, two weeks or so, already running in several production accounts. We launched something, uh, uh, two metrics that are very critical. What's my AP density? What's my channel density? Right? And so now what that's saying is, you know, how densely are my APs deployed? And so if I go in and say, hey, and how well is my channel distribution happening? Right? So once I have these two metrics, what's happening is some of our large customers that are API savvy, they already take this data across 300 sites, and then they say, are there sites where my channel density is not good, channel distribution? Are there sites where my AP density is either too much or too little? Now this becomes a measurable, comparable metric that is based on factual data. And again, for every site, you have you know, AP density, channel density, average number of APs, average co-channel neighbors, you know, average number of neighbors. Once you have this data, then what becomes very interesting is is, is the decisions that you can make and take with this. At this point, this is all self-driving. We don't expect our customers to touch RRM at all, right? So, um, you know, ideally, this is a simple visual view to say, how is my channel distribution? If I see, uh, again, the two customers that, uh, that are running this in production are, are massive, right? Uh, today, they have, you know, tens of thousands of APs. On their sites, this is a thing of art. I just can't show their site here. When you have a, you know, 300 APs on a site, you see this picture. Uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's amazing in terms of what you can actually see and do. So quick question. You're saying you expect it to be fully automatic. Is that another way of saying the customer is not allowed to change anything? There's no thresholds, no timers? There is thresholds. So, you, so, so the thresholds that you can set are, um, hey, RRM, only use these channels. Uh, you know, either use the DFS channels or don't use DFS. So we will do auto channel on the channels you specify that you want us to do auto channel. You say, hey, my power levels, I never want it to be below this, I never want it to be above this. You set those thresholds and we will play within that playground, yeah. right? And then here's a sort of, in, our, in my mind, here's the money shot. This is the truth in RRM. What is this saying? We have a third dedicated radio in all of our APs. Continuously it is scanning every minute on what is the channel utilization from um, external APs that are not mine, uh, APs that are mine that are occupying the other, cha other channels, and non-Wi-Fi interference. On a minute-by-minute -minute basis, we make this evaluation, and we're going to put this uh, truth out there to say, hey, this particular AP picked channel 161, right? Now, could it have picked 165, 144, one or the other? It should have. Right? Again, we're putting our data out there for you guys to throw stuff at us. Now the question is, why did it not pick one of those channels? And the answer really is, when we do a 24-hour evaluation, this is as the channel spectrum is, is, is being seen now. Right? This, is, this is sort of real time and live. And, and when we do the 24-hour evaluation, that's when we did the channel distribution. Uh, here you can see, that's where... Um, that's how we've arrived at the answer. So that's why when you said, uh, uh, the, uh, you know, could a human have done it better? Our assertion is, you know, at the two or three accounts that we've deployed with some of the worst RF environments, we are asserting that our RRM put it to test. We will we, we've all had that argument, or I'll, let me preface that with saying that I don't, I'm not, I don't call myself an RRM expert because right. I, I don't Because you don't leverage. have RRM. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. I do have it, but I do not leverage it. Yeah. However, um, we always, well, I hear discussions about RRM is only as good as how you set it up. So if you don't have RRM configured a certain way, if you take that out of our hands, we're basically relying on it as if we were going to take another vendor's network equipment, put it on the ceiling or what have you, and turn on RRM and then leave it. I'll give you an example. 
Is Tesla, when they give you a self-driving car, giving you all the knobs in what you will do when, when this happens and that happens, right? So the, the holy grail here is we don't have to do that, right? Because you as an expert can do it. Thousands of other engineers that are not uh, would, would, would like to let it run. Uh, and I totally agree and, with you, but you, you might have to trust your driving habits in your Tesla, right? <laughs> I mean, to get your full benefits out of it, right? right? So, right. I mean, there's, I mean, I totally I understand what you're saying. I yeah, do. so, but that's the holy grail. There are knobs there. Uh, there are things and thresholds that, they're, 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 that we are tweaking and we're learning. And, and this is where you help us. Take, I would, put us in your worst environment. I would actually like to kind of challenge you guys, cause especially because you have a guy over there in a the corner who likes to run tests. <laughs> uh, I'd like to see, see an in test environment where you just run it as your default auto, what it came out as RRM, and then a environment where, like Lee is talking about, where you have some knobs where you say you can only play in this playground. And I'd like to see where that data gets correlated and how well. Right. Uh, actually, please put us to the test. Uh, uh, if you have an environment like that, that you want to challenge us on RRM, take us on. Uh, we, we are ready for it. I'd be interested to see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd sure. like to see how you're classifying uh, you know, interference and whatnot. With sure. That, uh, sure. How sure. you're class sure. classifying that, sure. those things that are happening in the environment. That, um, and maybe uh, this is what I was going to ask earlier, is on an analytic point of view, is in some cases in places like um, healthcare and whatnot and retail, there's an there's a interference that happens monthly. On That's the right. clock, That's something. Right. That's right. You know, we like to see like, how long uh, do your analytics, you know, capture that? Right. Can we can we go back six months? Can we go back? So that's that's something I was going to ask you is like how how you know what's the length of time like that you have in your analytics? I, I don't know if you know. I I, I honestly don't. I, I think you know up, right now I top of my head answer is seven days right. because this is. This is petabytes of data we're talking about, right? Right, From yeah. every AP, every client, every second, you know, taking this data into the cloud. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'll have to get Because you'd want to see like, hey, this keeps reoccurring right, all the right, time. Right. You want to be right, able to right, capture right, it and right. figure right. out where it is, right? right? right. And say, okay, it always happens at this time. And then we can, maybe if it's two, right. three months, that'll help. But right. How much of that RM data is exposed through your API? So like to your point, maybe oh, you yeah. can collect. It is it yeah. actually, oh, that a actually lot better, of that data, yeah. the, the UI, Whatever you see in the UI is available by API. So you okay. can actually literally plot that graph for a 24 hour period for every channel. Okay. Right? Are, there, are there more? There's much more, more in the API, absolutely. Uh, there's, there's a lot more. You can actually fuse this data across APs uh, uh, and actually lay it out on a map because we provide you all the raw data. It's just we don't, we're not able to you know, implement fast enough in the UI to get this, but all of the so raw data, your question. our yeah. homework that we use uh, to arrive at these answers is in APIs, right? Yes. Sure, you would showed the other APs, our APs, and non-Wi-Fi. Non yes. How, how with the Wi-Fi chip do you do that? Um, the, the, the Broadcom chip has band speed in it uh, for uh, basically like clean air, uh, does non-Wi-Fi interference classification. Yeah, so our third radio has that. So, so it's basically just seeing it's, RF, no, it's saying it's, RF, it's saying it's RF energy um, that it can't, it, it can't decode. It, it so, classifies so as you know, Bluetooth and cordless phone and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. The, it's the same band speed chip, band speed that's, in, chip. that's in air magnet. That's right, that's XT. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, absolutely.